risks. Now this is something we sometimes don't like to do. It can be uncomfortable. And there's that nagging voice in your head saying, you just might fail. But Isaiah Hankel, the cheeky scientist, has written on the benefits of being ambitious. Dr. Hankel, welcome back to the show. Hi, Dr. Gina. Thanks for having me back. Awesome to have you. Now, you start on your new post about mm -hmm. ambition with a story regarding your high school girlfriend. And you had a revelation mm -hmm. of sorts about uh, why you were so into her. Do you want to tell our audience about this private moment? <laughs> Yeah, I guess I don't have a choice, huh? Uh, <laughs> now no. you don't. <laughs> yeah, uh, so she was very busy. She was into a lot of different things. And I mentioned in the article that she may not have been the prettiest girl, but she played tennis. She was, you know, on the varsity team. She was on the dance team. She was in every honors class. Uh, she didn't really have time for me. Uh, but for some, for some reason, I, I didn't know why then, I, I, was, I was really drawn to her and I kept vying for her, her attention anyway. And, and I think it's because of her level of ambition and because she was so engaged. People, people like this, man or woman. Um, there's something about them. They're very attractive. Uh, that, is, that is, of course, very attractive, and we all know that. But you say you have to take risks if you are going to have that level of success. Tell the audience your simple trick, you say, to making nine times more money. This is, this is going to be good. Yeah, so... Uh, like you said, it comes down to taking risks. That's really what ambition is. The, your willingness to sacrifice the comfort of what you already have to move forward and try new things, you know, go forward into uncertainty and get uncomfortable. And, and in the article, like you mentioned, I, I share some data that backs this up, and some of it's pretty surprising. Uh, there, there's been a couple of studies, uh, one out of Virginia Tech and one out of Dominican University in California, that show the people that write down their goals are 33% more likely to achieve them, uh, which, which is pretty amazing in itself. But these same studies also show that people who write down their goals make nine times as much money, nine times as much money as people who don't. And this, these are peer-reviewed scientific journal articles, not just you know some fluff on the internet. And this isn't just about business goals, right? This is this is any kind of goals, personal goals, and so on and so forth. Even something as simple as as, for example, losing weight or something like that. If it's if it's written down, you are much more likely to be successful, not just in terms of money, but in reaching those goals. Absolutely, and and a lot of, a lot of people have a have a problem with this because it's not like you rub a magic lamp and a genie pops out. Yeah. And just because you wrote down your goals, they give it to you. Uh, writing down your goals, it it, it puts those goals in your awareness. Specifically, it activates part of your brain called the reticular formation. And I, I don't know if you've ever bought a new car or saw a car you liked for the first time, and then all of a sudden you started seeing that car everywhere. Yes! Oh my gosh, yes! Why do we do that? I've totally done that. Right, and it's not because sales of that car suddenly spiked. It's right. Because it's because it's in your awareness now. It's in this yes. part of your brain called the reticular formation. And that's what writing down your goals does. So anything you write, you start... Anything you read, things you see on TV, all of a sudden it'll start triggering that part of your brain and it'll wake up and say, T pay attention to this, anything related to your goals. Now, you say that if you want to leave a legacy, you have to take a risk. Talk to us about risk because risk always feels slightly irresponsible. Talk to us. Yeah, uh, it does feel irresponsible, but I think it's, it's only irresponsible people that end up doing things that are remembered for a long time. And it might sound kind of harsh, but moving outside your comfort zone, pushing the boundary of things, these are the things that are going to be remembered uh, for beyond 100 years, for, for thousands of years. I mean, for, I give some examples of some of the amazing things that are going on right now. Uh, Google, for example, is creating an army of robot animals. Like, they're creating robots. There was another video online about uh, a robot human walking across rocks and keeping it balanced. Virgin Galactic is offering suborbital space flights. So these yep. things wouldn't happen without a high level of risk, without putting everything on the line, going after it, no matter how many people tell you it's impossible, and taking that risk. So writing down our goals, uh, accepting risk as, as an absolute necessity, and also you say looking at our own mortality will help motivate us. How does that work? Yeah, so asking yourself what's the worst that can happen, and instead of shying away from that question but allowing yourself to answer it and, and visualizing it can, can be very empowering because most people they just have kind of this hazy fear but if you really define what the worst case scenario is um, 
which, you know, anything other than death, it, it's not that bad. Let's say you, I mean, there's a reason that a lot of millionaires, billionaires even, people like Donald Trump, for example, uh, they, they go bankrupt and then they make multi multiple millions of dollars again. Go bankrupt, ha have it happen again. They risk everything, they lose big, but they, they live to risk another day. And so if you think of it that way, if you think of the worst case scenario being, okay, I got to sleep on a friend's couch or I have to, you know, go to a, a soup kitchen or something, that that's not that bad. And the key is you can keep improving while you're going through that tough time. So there really is nothing to lose. The, the worst case scenario is really a fresh start. Hmm. Interesting. Now, uh, you know, I, I talk to people all the time who say you should avoid risks uh, that, that talk about, you know, how you can fail. But I read in Four Hour Work Week um, that, you know, that you should not look at how, whether or not you can fail. You should look at what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail. But is that advocating living dangerously? Because we've all seen what happened with the real estate bubble, other things like that that have happened in our economy. Shouldn't we be somewhat cautious? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question, and uh, it's funny you bring up the four-hour work week because he also mentions in that book that every six months uh, you should sell everything and like live on the street for a day just so you can see what the worst-case scenario is. Mm. Uh, but I, I think I hate the word balance, but I think you got to be kind of ruthlessly realistic with yourself, but at the same time try to connect your your big lofty dreams with where you are grounded in reality right now. So what I mean by that is, yeah. Don't go run off a cliff and jump because you want to be the first person to fly without any sort of machinery. Uh, don't don't you know race traffic or try to live in the Serengeti by yourself. Don't do stupid things that there's no nothing on the other end of that. Right? There's nothing. There's nothing right. to be gained. Focus focus on on goals that are, are productive and and realize they're possible. But then try to connect where you are to where you want to go rationally. So our risk should have something to do with the end goal, which is so, which is the reason why it's so important that we write it down in the first place. I totally get that. But you talk about uh, focusing on our mortality and using that as a motivator to realize that you only have so long to get your goals accomplished and what are your goals by what age, so on and so forth. But you also say, find your inner child. That's not exactly what you said, but you talk about being a kid. Uh, how, how is it that we incorporate that into our goal plan? Yeah, um, I'm glad you brought that one up because I think, and the comparison I make is that when you have goals and when you're living like you're not afraid of little risks or things that people get really wrapped up in, like 401ks or whatever else, that you start to live a little bit more like a kid. Um, small kids, for example, they, they wake up and they're just beyond excited because it's a new day, not because it's their birthday or anything special is going on. They wake up, they're jumping up and down in their crib in their bed. They're really excited. They get dressed, they fly around, <laughs> they play with everything. I'm just visualizing they, you right they, now getting ready for work, jumping up and down in your crib. But anyway, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's a big crib. Yeah. Um, but, and, you know, they test the boundaries between what's right and what's wrong. If they don't get their way, they throw a tantrum. They don't take no for an answer. And really, this is, this is what it's like when you have a set of goals, a set of clearly defined goals, and you're living for a purpose. You fly out of bed, you attack the day, you... you you take on a bunch of different projects that are in line with your overall purpose, and you don't take no for an answer, and you start bending all the rules that you don't like, and you start having fun, because it's it's fun to take risks if you look at it from the right right perspective. Ha, I'm sure the people I work with will be so glad you advised me to have a tantrum when I don't get my way. That just always goes <laughs> over so well here. But I, I just wanted to say this to you. Um, you know, we we talk a lot about um, you know taking risks and proving people wrong, and they say that the best revenge is living well. So, what's your best advice to people? in terms of taking risks in, in, in accordance with their plan? My best advice to people for taking risks in according to their plan? Well, yeah, and, and how that works out, you know, as far as just ultimately proving people wrong being the best part of all, I think, is one of the things you said. Yeah, and I, I talk about that a lot. I think a lot of people shy away from talking about that. But yeah, when, when, when it you is go fun. To take a risk, <laughs> yeah, the, like, they don't want to give it haters and negative people attention, but I think that you have to call, kind of call that out because it really mm -hmm. does happen and it holds a lot of people back from taking risks. And when you take a risk, when you set a goal and you go after it, there are going to be people and a lot of them are going to be close to you, family members, friends, colleagues that are going to advise you against it. Mm -hmm. And it's not so much that they're really worried about you, but your risk kind of points out something in them that they have to justify, whether it's their own inaction or their own way of living, their own indecision. Mm -hmm. and, and their first response is to tell you everything that can go wrong. But you have to really avoid that because, again, the worst-case scenario is not that bad. Okay, you know, losing 
it's losing some money, having to start over. It, it's not that bad. You have to really focus on what you want and not people trying to pull you back and help you play safe all the way to the grave. That's right. Isaiah Hankel, there's one guarantee. If you don't take any risks, you won't have any gain. Isaiah, thank you so much for being with us. Now, you have heard of the habits of highly successful people. Well, my next guest is going to tell us about the habits of highly miserable people, what not to do again, and how you can avoid becoming like them. So you're going to want to stay tuned. We have more Smart Life coming up. Look how smart you're getting already. Stay with us.